Welcome to this Learn Electrics video, the third in our video short series. There have been many changes to Amendment 2 of the wiring regulations, and in these videos we will be short and specific about just one change to the regulations to make that change more easily understood. Just one part of the regulations at a time in easy 5 or 8 minute sessions. The big question with Amendment 2 is are AFDDs mandatory and must I install them in all new work? Arc fault detection devices are installed at the origin of the circuit that they protect. Arcs and sparks between conductors or metalwork at different electrical potential will produce a unique and characteristic arc signature. An AFDD will detect this and help to provide protection against fire caused by electrical equipment. So what did previous regulations and amendments say about AFDDs? In the original 18th edition, going back to 2018, AFDDs were recommended in certain properties. But what is recommended? What does that mean in relation to AFDDs? If we look on page 18 of the new Brown book, we can see the interpretation of that word. It says that AFDDs should be fitted, but there may be other possibilities available. In other words, it would be a good idea to consider it, but it is not mandatory. Now, fast forward to 2022 and amendment number two. What is the wording now? With amendment two, the regulation states that AFDDs shall be provided. So what does the word shall mean? And again, the answer can be found on page 18. Shall be provided means that it is a requirement. It must be done and no deviation is allowed for certain types of premises. In other words, it is mandatory. Regulation 421.1.7 on page 86 of the regulations book states that Arc Fault Detection Devices, AFDD, to BSEN 62606, shall be provided for single phase AC final circuits supplying socket outlets not exceeding 32 amps in the following premises. High risk residential buildings, houses in multiple occupation, purpose built student accommodation, and care homes. In other words, it must be done, no ifs, no buts, do it. So what about other premises that are not on the list? How are they affected? Regulation 421.1.7 continues and says that for all other premises, the use of AFDDs to BSEN 62606 is recommended for single phase AC final circuits supplying socket outlets not exceeding 32 amps and the expression all other premises will include all our domestic commercial and industrial work in other words it should be done even in a new domestic installation however it is not mandatory and other options can be considered cost should not be the major factor in the decision making process to omit AFDDs from the installation. If, after explaining the improved safety of fitting these devices, the customer still refuses to have AFDDs installed, the electrician should have this decision confirmed in writing and signed by the customer. Perhaps include a statement to this effect on the written quotation and have it signed by the customer before work begins. This is your get out of jail card in any future litigation when the customer denies ever having that conversation with you. And it does happen. Some additional information relating to this regulation. Note 1 on page 86 relates to the high risk residential buildings or HRRBs and suggests heights and numbers of stories, etc. However, after the Grenfell fire and tragedy, it is expected that there will be additional requirements in the future but at the moment the full recommendations of the Building Safety Act are not known. 
HMOs, or houses in multiple occupation, are generally large houses that have been divided into separate bedrooms and private areas with common kitchens and bathrooms, etc. Often housing several family units, the landlord has a duty to ensure that any electrical problem in one part of the building does not affect the safety of occupants in another part. And lastly, the regulation tells us that AFDDs shall be placed at the origin of the circuit being protected, and this is usually the consumer unit or distribution board. And that the use of AFDDs does not obviate the need to apply one or more measures provided in other clauses of BS 7671. But what does not obviate mean? A definition in this case is that it does not remove the need to use other safety measures as specified in the regulations. For example, overload and additional protection may still be required. Thank you for watching this video. It is very much appreciated. Please subscribe to our channel to get access to all of our videos and remember to click on notify to be sure of not missing our next video. And you will find even more information, videos and help on our website at learnelectrics.com and don't forget that you can also type in learn electrics or one word into the youtube search bar to go directly to our channel at any time from any computer we are constantly adding new videos to our channel don't miss the next one and once again thank you for watching and we hope to see you again very soon